Data is the new oil. We've all heard that phrase before. And there's more to data than just GDPR implementations and personal data. In the fintech sphere, with the rise of AI, machine learning and open banking, our team has been having a lot of conversations with our clients around the protection and exploitation of data. Whether from a customer perspective, what can I do with this data? Or from a supplier perspective, how can I protect the rights to use and disclose my data? Either way, the key areas of focus are the IP rights in data and what the contract says. This short video will set out our thoughts on some key areas. What are the key IP rights in relation to data? How can you protect the IP rights in relation to data? And some drafting tips and tricks. Working out who owns data can be complicated. There isn't a single property right which applies to all types of data in all circumstances. Instead, we have a number of different legal rights, copyright, database right, confidentiality, and contractual rights which can apply to data depending on the circumstance. Working out which of these rights will apply is the key to successfully manage data in contractual transactions. One of the most powerful rights which can protect data is copyright. If your data is protected by copyright, you can prevent others creating copies or communicating the data to the public. However, copyright doesn't protect raw information and to obtain protection, there needs to be some originality in the way the information is recorded. It needs to be an intellectual creation of an author which reflects their personality, and this won't apply for many types of data. It's also worth knowing that copyright can apply to collections of data, things like tables, compilations and databases. And this type of protection can be useful in some contexts, but it's important to recognise that any protection arises from the originality in the selection or arrangement of the data and doesn't protect the individual data elements. Aside from copyright protection, EU database right can also protect against extraction or reutilisation of the contents of a protected database. In order to obtain a database right, you need to show that you've made a substantial investment in obtaining, presenting or verifying the contents of the database. This will give you the right to prevent third parties from extracting or using those contents. But to get a database right, the entity making the investment needs to be based in Europe and the right doesn't protect investment in creating data about your own operations. Aside from copyright and database right, where the data is confidential, you can also protect it against disclosure and misuse using the law of confidence. You can protect data as confidential information using a confidentiality clause in your contract or by relying on the circumstances the data was disclosed as imposing an obligation of confidence. However, a key limitation is that confidentiality protection falls away once the data becomes public. Now, as IP rights and confidentiality don't always offer full protection for every type of data, the most common way to control data is by imposing contractual obligations. Data suppliers often impose contractual restrictions around the use and disclosure of data, even when the data isn't protected by IP rights or confidentiality. And a really good example of this is in the market data space where data vendors often rely on contractual rights to commercialise their data. Now Johnny is going to give some tips and tricks on how to manage data rights within the contract. The most common pitfall when it comes to drafting is failing to align the IP clause with the confidentiality clause. Now IP is defined uh, in the contract to include confidential information often. Uh, but the rights to use and share, let's say, licensed data is dealt with in two places, um, but they're not often aligned properly. For example, in the IP clause, you might have a wide right to use the licensed data, perpetual and irrevocable, fully sublicensable. But then, to the extent that licensed data includes confidential information, the right to use that um, confidential information is restricted. You can only share it as long as you keep it confidential, so it's not fully sublicensable. Often you've got to return that confidential information on termination or expiry of the agreement, so it doesn't continue in perpetuity. The cleaner option in my mind is to remove confidential information from the IP definition and deal with the use and disclosure of confidential information separately in a confidential information clause and check that clause aligns properly with the IP provisions. Make sure the supplier's got an appropriately wide license to use that licensed data for the agreed permitted purpose. Then make sure the license is, is clearly set out to be subject to the confidentiality clause. 
And then in the confidentiality clause, you could have a subparagraph called confidential information in the license data. And you could state to the extent the license data includes confidential information, then the following principle shall apply. The supplier has the right to use that confidential information in the license data for the agreed permitted purposes, and those permitted purposes need to align with the license provisions. The supplier has the right to disclose the confidential information included within the license data to subcontractors or other third parties, provided they all keep it confidential. And finally, the supplier has the right to continue to use the confidential information included within the license data post-termination or expiry, provided they keep it confidential. That's the best position for the supplier. It aligns the IP provisions with the confidentiality clause, but all that obviously is subject to negotiation with the customer.